Welcome back. Now, let's get the show on the road. Uh, we've had five successive general elections, 2000, well, 1999, 2003, 2007, 2011, and 2015. And in each of these cases, we had reports of certain levels of electoral violence. With the 2019 elections coming up, and we're talking about coming up in two weeks' time, um, how prepared are we? And how are we going to ensure that we have free and fair elections? Well, these are questions that people are asking. And of particular interest is the security threats out in the Northeast, Boko Haram insurgency, and clashes between farmers and herdsmen. There's also the lack of election financing regula re regulations, which leaves open the door for patronage networks to fund campaigns using public funds. I think this is an issue that should be looked at very critically so that uh, incumbents do not use public funds to fund campaigns. To look at this and dissect this with us this morning is my pleasure to welcome Taiwo Adebe, who is a legal practitioner. Thank you. Good very morning, welcome. Taiwo. Thank, Thank you for joining us. We also have the co executive director, Strength in Diversity Development Center, Imam Abdul Karim Shafiu. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we expect Jonah Eromon to join us, yeah. either via Skype or maybe in our studios in Abuja. But we have people in the studio, and let's get on with them. Now, Taiwo, you're a legal practitioner. Um, I don't know how many of you look very young, so <laughs> maybe you didn't take part in the 1999 elections. I took part in the 1999 Oh, you were actually election. old enough to take part in? Yes. Oh, yes. fantastic. So you've witnessed all the elections since we returned to this dispensation. Yes. Now, um, compare the preparations for those elections, 1999, 2003, 2007, 11, 15, and the preparations for this election. Do you think that we're going to have a freer and fairer, less violent election? election? Mm. In fairness, I would look at in, in facing what is ahead, it's always important to look back at what has happened. Like you said, we've had so many issues and the issue is whether or not we are better prepared to manage the many issues that may come up for these elections. And I think that there's a lot of sensitization going on. Um, people are being uh, voter education and all of that. But the issue is that we need to do more because, in fairness, so much is on. I mean, there's so much. Um, the environment is tense. People are saying, this is, is, is it going to be this person or this other person? And, you know, the tensions are high. So I think it's important to do much more than we've done because, indeed, we cannot, we cannot do too much to, to ensure that we have... Um, a violence-free election. So do you think that we're doing enough this time? I think that, I think that we can do more. We're trying, <laughs> but I think that we can do much more. Imam, what are your thoughts? Well, um, sincerely Listen, speaking, this, I was, we're talking about elections that begin in two weeks, 14 days. Well, uh, unlike the previous election, where we have um, um, some sort of uh, people being apprehensive, about the outcome of the election, because the last election, just like the um, changing hands, you know, the incumbent, you know, and the same thing is coming up this time. Well, so, we didn't know that. that, that, that yeah, at that be. time, yeah. <laughs> now, the issue here is that we are experiencing the same thing, even if not more, sincerely speaking. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the spate of violence in those previous uh, elections mm. that we had, it's not as what we have now. We have too many faces of violence coming up, both ethnic and religious. Boko Haram is still striking. Uh, we have other ethnic crises, even within party structures. Yeah. Those that are meant to even vie for these positions. Within parties, we have intra-party conflicts, which have not been like that in the past, like even the last election. 
So this makes this election a very um, tough one, and the situation is tensed. But we know that because of our exposure and the experience Nigerians have had in the past elections, and so many people who are coming to set the whole uh, stage into focus, like civil society organizations and other people have sensitized themselves. People are ready to monitor, to observe the election. People are ready to, to lay down their lives for a peaceful election. So they don't, so that makes it a bit different because having more people having freedom of expression, freedom to say this is how we want it, this is how it should go. You know what I'm saying? Unlike before when people are gagged into some certain thoughts and ideology whereby they are unable to even express their view, or people are buying into certain sort of um, uh, the political agenda. So that is, uh, I think, is a different... Topic. You know, uh, how you, let me come back to you, Taiwo. You talked about the, the fact that sensitization or voter education is going on. Do you think we're waiting too late? or we waited too late to start the sensitization? Yes, or, because we know that elections are in Nigeria. Every four years. Year cycle. Yeah. So how is it that we wait until a few weeks or a few months of the elections and then we start educating the people? Or well, you answer that question when we come back from this break. Welcome back. We're still talking achieving non-violent elections. Um, so, Taiwo, uh, the question I asked was, when you, mentioned, when you said there's sensitization going on, there's, or there's education, voter education going on, do you think we wait too late to begin this process of educating the people, knowing that it's a four-year cycle? Exactly. I, I really believe that much more should have been done very much early in the day. At least once the last election was concluded four years ago, we knew that in another four years we'll be here again. So why not at least a year or two earlier start giving people um, orientation on what is expected of them, the mm. proper conduct at elections, so that people are, are well informed. And then when we're talking about election violence, we're looking at who are the people that are really involved. The, we're not talking about the elites. We're talking about those who may not even have access to this um, popular mode of transmission of information. So mm. we need, we should have gone to the grassroots. But it is said that it is those that have the popular mode of communication, uh, media, that, that they're the ones that instigate those ones that don't have exactly. that. Exactly. Uh -huh. so, so they instigate So the elite them. are actually involved. They, the elite are involved indirectly, instigating those who don't know better. So maybe it is those people who don't know better that we need to reach out to. So that they know they are left from their right. And they know that my life is not worth um, anybody's money. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about those who... What, what, what was the word that you used? What were the words that you used? Those, those who don't know any better. There's also the youth in that bracket. Am I correct? Yes. Yes, yes. and we have a youth with us this morning, Jonah Eromon. Jonah, good morning. Jonah joins us via Skype. Good morning, Jonah. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Good, good to have you with us. Now, um, you, you are a young man. I don't know if you saw on social media the uh, pictures of Oluomo and his children. His children are in school in America. Um, I want to know yeah, if you I saw, saw it. Picture. Good. And what, did that, what message did that send to you? What message did you get from that picture? Um, interesting to note... that um, engaging the children of other Nigerians in um, engaging them negatively his kids are, are out there. So, 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 sorry about that. We have a, we have a very bad connection. Um, let me bring that back to the studio. Um, that you're, I, I assume you are a parent. Um, what message did you get from that picture? Yeah, the message I, I got from that is that parents should be aware, uh, be aware of uh, the fact that some people somewhere are using other people's children mm -hmm. to foment trouble. And at the same time, they are protecting their own children. So meaning that we have to come back to our senses. Mm -hmm. And uh, we must ensure that our children are properly 
are engaged positively and we do not allow them to be used by some um, few elements that are get, making money from violence and conflict around this election. What we have seen in this case is that people themselves, those people that have formed forth of this crisis, are not ready to even lay down their own life, not talking of the children. Mm -hmm. So why, as a parent, would you allow your own child or children to be killed for somebody's... Uh, mm -hmm. money or, yeah, Taiwo, this, this message has gone out over and over again. Do you think it is hitting home? I think if it was hitting home, we wouldn't be where we are. So I think that we need to do a lot more. We need to get to the grassroots. Everybody goes to a church, everybody goes to a mosque. How are our um, religious leaders, are they involved in sensitizing people about this? Mm. Um, the civil liberties and um, society, um, the civil organizations, I mean, how much are we doing? I think that much more needs to be done. We need to reach out to those who who are actually involved and let them know that what is, what is in this for me? I mean, that's the reason why they are there, but let them know the value of what they are sacrificing. Mm. But when, like, when we talk about reaching out to those, I don't know if we have um, Jonah back now. Jonah, are you there? Okay, we'll get back to Jonah. But Imam, the, the fact that the politicians make a lot of utterances, some of them unbecoming, 